WIFO, 105.5 FM in Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO FM Jessup. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show for this Monday, February 27th. It's brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yalmans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. FDIC Equal Housing Lender. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by Oakwin and Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South Fair Street right here in Jessup. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM and Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio. And Bob, we've got a guest on the phone with us this morning. It's Mondays with Meeks. we got State Representative Stephen Meeks on the phone with us again. It's been a couple of weeks since we talked to him. Last week it was a holiday. The week before that he was in committees. But Stephen, always good talking to you. Appreciate you being here on the show. Stephen, you there? Hello, Stephen. Yeah, and everything's set up like it's supposed to be. Hold on a second here. You there, Stephen? Uh, Stephen, you need to call back. When you hear that, duh, 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 that means we got disconnected. He was right there. Here we go. I'll take it away. Stephen on the phone with us. Uh, Stephen, how you doing today? Good morning, sir. I'm doing great. How about you? We're doing great. Like I said, it's been a while since we talked to you due to the holiday and you were in committee meetings. Uh, but the good news is that you're, you're more than halfway through the legislative session. The mid-year budgets have been approved. It looks like the governor's proposals for those rebates to Georgia taxpayers is going to come through. Again, a one-time income tax uh, for homeowners. Also, the regular $500 for joint couples, $500 or $250 for single filers. So pretty much, Jerry McGuire, show me the money. You're going to bring us money back to the taxpayers with the governor proposed. All right. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you for a, another opportunity to be with you today and, and visit. And it, uh, it has been a busy, uh, a, a quick session. We are today is day 24 uh, of the legislative session. As you mentioned, over halfway there of the 40-day session. I'm um, I actually home today. I have a funeral to attend after a while, then headed to Atlanta thereafter. But uh, day 24 today, a lot of uh, a lot of activity, a lot of legislation getting introduced, and uh, committee meetings have uh, significantly picked up. So uh, it's been really busy at the Capitol. And uh, so next Monday, March 6th, is crossover day, as I've mentioned uh, in the past, and 
on the uh, legislative uh, calendar. That is the magical day which legislation has to pass the uh, House or the Senate in order to uh, have a chance to reach the governor's desk uh, by the end of session for a signature into law. So a lot of things will happen this week. A lot of debate will happen this week in committee. And, uh, of course, a lot of, a lot of uh, legislation getting refer- referred to the Rules Committee, which is the next step in the process. And, of course, a lot of times the Rules Committee has their opinion of the legislation as well. So a lot of work left to do once you get it out of committee and on into rules. Uh, with, and then the final step onto the floor for a vote. But you did mention some good things that have happened. The uh, the Senate continues work on the mid-year budget, uh, the amended budget, and um, I know the uh, the two chairmen have been having some conversations. And we uh, the governor's uh, tax uh, rebate, the one billion dollar tax rebate that, uh, that he had mentioned uh, early in the session, which would give uh, five hundred dollars to married couples and two fifty for singles. Uh, single filers uh, has passed the House and will move on to the Senate. And of course, that will uh, be funded within the appropriations bill. So a lot, a lot to do, a lot going on as we uh, as we hit day 24 and continue to work uh, toward day 40 um, and uh, hopes of passing good legislation and and uh, that will have a positive effect on the lives of uh, Georgians as we move forward. As you mentioned, there's probably going to be a lot of debates going on with some bills. <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this one that we had on the news. Uh, there's a bill to propose the weight on uh, county roads. Uh, it says the farmers have been kind of fighting for this because they're in South Carolina. The weight's more than it is in Georgia and Florida, same way. So I know you're a farmer, so you have a lot of knowledge about this. So explain what's all taking place with that. It's because I know the DOT and people like that are fighting against it. So where do you see that playing out? Right, and, and I appreciate that, Bob. We've, uh, we've had a long, a long time debate over uh, truck weights in Georgia. And uh, so where we are is currently under current law, uh, and to travel on interstate, the uh, weight limit is 80,000 uh, 80, pounds. That's within the, inter- the Dwight D. Eisenhower interstate system. Uh, you have to be at that weight level or under. Uh, states have granted variances uh, for industries uh, over the past uh, years. And in Georgia, we currently have a 80,000 pound limit with a, a uh, 5% variance, which takes you to 84,000 pounds that can legally be carried on state and local roads. Uh, for the past three years, uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, the uh, nationwide shortage of nearly 70,000 truck drivers. Uh, Governor Kemp has, by executive order, uh, permitted uh, trucks to run at a uh, at a 95,000 weight limit across the board. Uh, drivers, uh, companies apply for permits, and we've had the ability uh, to obtain those permits uh, for for forestry and for for other industries. Uh, not necessarily agriculture, uh, but we, we've had that ability now for almost three years. I think the current executive order expires the 1st of March, March 11th to 12th. So we've had that debate, and, and the governor's given the industry that ability, given the uh, shortage in the uh, truck drivers and the difficulties in the, in the uh, uh, supply chain. So we, we've had this debate actually been going on for nearly 20 years, uh, and it was actually uh, 20 right at 20 years ago when the 5% variance was granted. So what we've gone back and taken a look at and tried to really bring the parties together to, to try to get to a, a resolution of the issue. It's one that comes up quite frequently. Uh, it's important to the timber industry uh, where, where, again, we have a shortage of drivers, and a lot of those are short hauls going from the woods to the mills. Uh, so we've tried to take a look at that and say, okay, where can we come to some happy median uh, between all the weight limits involved? And, and where we've come to is a 12.5%, 12.5% variance, uh, which takes the 90,000 pounds uh, down from the governor's 95 executive order and um, tried to work it that way to get some resolution to the issue that comes up every year and trying to give uh, forestry uh, industry of a, a competitive advantage, uh, or a comp- be more competitive, not a, not an advantage, but to be more competitive in what they can haul uh, to the mills from the woods, 
uh, from landowners uh, that uh, that cut tracts of timber across our state. So that's kind of you know the 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 bigger picture. And what we've heard is you know the one thing that we cannot control um, is is our weather. And whether you're you're cutting in a swamp and timber that may have absorbed water, or whether you're cutting sod to be delivered to a new home that's being built, uh, whether the weather will affect the weight of that product. Uh, in the sod world, if on a normal load of sod you would have 18 pallets, uh, which is about 500 square feet per pallet, um, in in wet times you're going to reduce that number that that load by two pallets because obviously the the dirt's wet um, and it's going to be heavier. So we we've, we've tried to take a look at look at it and say. How can we grant a variance to allow uh, producers, whether that be producers of sod, uh, whether it be producers of, of uh, uh, forest products, uh, feed, whatever that may be, delivered to farms, uh, the ability to be more efficient um, as, they, uh, as they go throughout their day. We heard from uh, Godfrey Feed Company up in uh, Madison that with the variance of Twelve and a half percent at ninety thousand pounds, uh, he could actually reduce the number of loads he delivers to his customers uh, by adding, you know, another uh, three thousand pounds uh, to that, or six thousand pounds, excuse me, to that, uh, you know, over a period of nine days. So, uh, a lot of positive things and reasons why we should look at it. Uh, DOT has has been opposed to it, and. And we're trying to work with them to see where we have some common ground, if there is any available. Again, with us on the phone is Stephen Meeks, representative. Again, it's Mondays with Meeks. Another issue that's being debated, <clears throat> I thought this was interesting, we had this story. Uh, the lobbyists of uh, cigarettes have that much power, and they haven't raised the tax on cigarettes in over 20 years. They're trying to raise it 20 cents per pack, which they say would raise another $90 million. They already get $200 million in tobacco uh, industry uh, for people buying cigarettes, things like that. But I thought that was interesting. For 20 years, they haven't raised the cost of a pack of cigarette tax. Uh, so where do you think that'll go? We, uh, yeah, we haven't done that in 20 years. And, uh, and as you mentioned, the significant income um, off of that. I was talking about a small increase uh, in that. I don't know where it'll end up. It, it, it's one of those, uh, Representative Ron Stevens from over in the Savannah area, <laughs> Uh, has introduced that bill every year, and we continue to uh, to talk about it and, and uh, debate it, but we have not done it. Uh, it's, the other thing to remember is uh, I believe the state currently still receives in the neighborhood of $13 million a year uh, from the master settlement agreement from uh, what was referred to as the tobacco lawsuit from years ago. So still significant money from tobacco coming into our state. We're still a producer of of tobacco in our state, the, uh, we have product tobacco producers across the uh, across the state, and a lot of it's going to uh, to the Europe and China uh, from what's uh, manufactured here. But uh, will be a debate that continues. I don't know where that one will go. It's uh, it's early in the process, and it's been talked about in ways and means. Uh, I think it was a subcommittee hearing last week that um, that was held. But we'll uh, continue to follow that one as it makes its way through the process. The tobacco lobbyists have that much power. Been able to prevent a raise in tax in 20 years. That's pretty strong. Well, I think it's one of the things that uh, raising taxes, period, is something that Republicans have resisted for many years. And uh, of course, under our Constitution and having a balanced budget, we think we've got the right balance of, of income and, and taxes. Uh, so we try to, uh, I think that plays a lot, to, a lot into it as well. A couple of weeks ago, I read a lot about the gambling proposals, but it's kind of died down. I haven't seen anything in the last couple of weeks. So where's that stand? Well, we've got a bill that was introduced uh, last week by uh, Representative uh, Marcus Weedauer from uh, around the Athens area on, uh, on sports betting. Uh, and it seems to be getting the most attention right now. Of course, uh, sports betting is something that Georgians can do online now and is not regulated. Um, we've had all kinds of debate internally on the on the bill. Uh, that is one that was uh, that was dropped last week, and we will uh, it'll make its way probably through the subcommittee hearings this week. So we'll be learning more about that one. Uh, but it's it's more focused towards sports betting. 
uh, online than uh, than actual casinos in our state. I know health care is a big issue, a big topic of the legislative session. What's the latest on that? Continue to work through it. Again, we're Medicaid expansion com- uh, continues to uh, to come up, and it's something that is we're uh, we're not uh, we've not done. We uh, we were able to go back and add some uh, benefits to. Uh, women, infant, and children benefits in terms of uh, particularly uh, those who are expecting and providing uh, the um, uh, some benefits to uh, to them for health care. So we'll it, it's one that we continue to talk about. We've had a an issue uh, with a, a, a uh, what is it Atlanta Wellstar closing in Atlanta, a huge uh, impact there uh, in the city of Atlanta. And of course, we've got some other. Uh, issues across our state, but we continue to work through, particularly in rural Georgia, um, rural, rural health and making sure that we can provide uh, the facilities that can provide needed health care uh, to our residents. I'm just curious, have you inter- introduced any legislation this year? Anything? Uh, the, one, the one that I did introduce was the truck weight bill. That's the one I've, I've been working on, and uh, so we are trying to, uh, to get that done, but that's the one I've I've uh, worked on uh, and introduced. We are working on a couple of other ones uh, that is very early in the process. It'll be probably a two-year uh, process on some of the other ones. But the, the big one I've done right now has been uh, has been truck weight. I got gotcha. you. As you said, we're more than halfway. The crossover day is just a few days away. So, what's on the agenda this week? Well, again, I, I, we are. On, uh, I'll be home today for a few. Don't head it back up tomorrow, and we'll continue to. Uh, uh, have lots of um, uh, committee hearings, and then we've got several in uh, committee hearings later today in uh, in agriculture and consumer affairs, uh, dealing with uh, one with farmers markets uh, farmers market piece of legislation the chairman has. Uh, we had one last week where we were the uh, the veterinarians uh, who uh, get their license from the um, secretary of state's office has uh, decided they would like to come out from under their, the. I'll say the thumb of the Secretary of State and go to a, a board and uh, attach to the Department of Agriculture. So that's one that, that we took up last week that we'll like to see on the floor this week. And we're beginning to see more of that from across the professional license and industry. Uh, as those who are, are uh, applying for those licenses that are taking longer and uh, um, contact the Secretary of State's office really to get an understanding of what that challenge is. I know the foresters have been one in the past that have expressed interest in them moving their uh, board to a an attached agency, being the Georgia Forestry Commission. Now we have the uh, veterinarians. We've also had uh, professional engineers uh, to do the same. So there's been a lot of attention to to that because we're we're losing that centrally located processing facility, so to speak, with the Secretary of State's office. So a lot of the conversation we need to have there uh, as we move forward. Uh, but again, we are. We'll continue to work on the uh, the mid-year budget, the supplemental, and then um, the, once we get it done, the next big lift and big challenge will be the um, the FY24 budget, which is you know in preliminary works, but we'll really get into gear once we get the supplemental done. Once again, on the phone with us is Representative Stephen Meeks. Is Monday with Meeks? Are you hearing much from your constituents and what's on their mind? We are beginning to hear uh, more and more about sports betting. Uh, it was interesting. I started yesterday getting uh, significant emails from from across the district, so that's one that's uh, beginning to pop up. We've got uh, some legislation regarding the uh, QDR codes on uh, on ballots uh, that are printed on the ballots that's over in the uh, over in the Senate. Uh, we've got one that House Bill 131 that um, is a uh, piece of legislation that deals with uh, DACA students who were here and whether or not um, whenever they continue their secondary education uh, after graduating from high school as to what uh, tuition they are charged. Uh, currently, they pay an out-of-state tuition. So uh, those are uh, several of the big ones that have come up recently that we're beginning to hear um, uh, from constituents about. And, of course, Okie Pinocchi. Uh, the uh, EPD held two hearings last week on their proposed uh, uh, permits for the um, mining around the South of the Okie Finoki. Uh, a lot of uh, participation, I understand. I didn't get a chance to, uh, to tune in, but I understand a lot of participation and opposition to that. So 
uh, those are the uh, the big things that I'm hearing from constituents on, and certainly appreciate the opportunity to uh, to represent House District 178. And um, before I forget, I had an opportunity last week. The uh, local FFA chapter uh, from here in Wayne County uh, came up to uh, FFA Day at the Capitol uh, during what is referred to as National FFA Week. So it was great to see uh, the um, advisor Nick Hodges and Kaylee Arnold, the president of the Wayne County uh, FFA chapter who was also named salutatorian, uh, the graduating class. It was great to see, uh, to see them in, um, in Atlanta last week and uh, had a chance to sit down and visit with them in the office. So a lot of, uh, a lot of great folks coming to Atlanta. Look forward to hearing from uh, uh, voters and constituents. And if you're in Atlanta, please, uh, please give us a shout and come by the office. It's your capital. It's your office. Uh, we also have the PAGE program. Uh, look forward to hearing from those who uh, would like to participate in that, just give us a call, and uh, we'll certainly work with students who have that interest as well. And before, <clears throat> before we let you go, like I said, you always give your information. If anybody's listening and wants to get a hold of Stephen Meeks or ask a question or comment, uh, how do they go about doing What's the best way to get a hold of you? Cell number is always, uh, cell is always on. My cell number is 912-207-0813. Uh, call or text, and then via email at stephen.meeks at house.ga.gov. Stephen, appreciate it. Always good to talk to you on Mondays with Stephen Meeks. And, uh, again, stay safe in Atlanta. And, like I said, the session will be over before you know it. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys next week. Okay, take right. care. Take Thank care, you. Stephen. All right. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, 105.5 FM in Jessup. State Representative Stephen Meeks calling in this morning on Mondays with Meeks. Well, Bob, did you did you find the um, ballpark up there okay? I noticed it was just I looked it up online and noticed the fact that it was just off seventy uh, off just off seventy five there. You couldn't miss it. Yep, I was able to get there. I said I didn't have to drive. So well, you good. didn't drive. Oh, uh, you no, rode with some. Well, I made it easy for you. Didn't yeah, you? I went yeah. with some friends. So All right. I said it was a nice ballpark. First time I've been there, just a gorgeous complex. Yeah, uh, I've heard it's very just, nice. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Those synthetic fields. Amazing that we were able to play that game Friday because, I mean, it was really coming down. I mean, the rain was just pounding. I mean, Coach McDonald had to have the hood on. Just, I mean, it was just really coming down. But uh, with those synthetic synthetic turfs, it just drains so well. So, Unless it's lightning, they play the they game. Play. Yeah, so hmm. but it was you know good competition. I hate the time limit got us on Friday night, but it is, it is what, what it is. is. And yeah. that, and that call, that. that that third call strike. I mean, that's a three-two count. It's an eight-five game. You got the bases loaded. If that is called a ball, it's eight-six. We're still playing. I mean, just I think the umpire's ready to get out of the raining. Go yeah, home. that's what you said there. I mean, that thing was three feet outside. Called a strike, man. But you know. Umpires are going to miss calls, but that that was but a tough that far, yeah that that was a tough call to swallow for Wayne County fans. So, but it was good competition. Loganville defending five state champions. Etowah was the the, uh, the runner ups in seven eight last year. They've dropped to six A and South Forsyth ranked in the top ten in their classification. So, it was good competition. You know that's what Coach McDonald does. He schedules that tough competition yeah, and then hug right in there with all of them and beat one of them. Once region play comes, we should be fine. Should be rocking and rolling region and. Hoping to host a state playoff game first round, so should be good. Congrats to the golf team. Great showing this weekend down at Osprey Cove. I understand. Talked to Coach Jones on the way home. Said they had a great crowd at the track meet. A lot of I got to see that teams. coming into the radio station to broadcast the baseball games. And when I left the station after it was over, there was still you know it was wrapped up by then, but there was a lot of buses there, a lot of folks there. It was just great to see a track event being held here at Wayne County High School. Good to see Matthew Fuller win that 100-yard dash. I mean, anybody saw him running with the football, they know he's fast. <laughs> <laughs> what an athlete. Just a junior coming back next year. It's going to be fun watching him next year on that football field. So, But just a lot of lot of sports going on. Uh, just, you said uh, there was some recreation action, too, in basketball. Yeah, the All-Star District. Uh, unfortunately, all three teams got beat in district play, so that season came to a close. But statewide, BC boys are still in the final eight in Long County. Congrats to them. They're yeah, their boys basketball tie. team. They're in the Elite Eight. So as the tournaments continue. 
Yeah, we have the Long County Chamber of Commerce call in this morning to wish some one of their employees a happy birthday today. Yeah. yeah. So we wish the Blue Tide the best there as they continue <clears throat> on in state playoff uh, action in baseball. And the Wayne County Varsity Baseball team, you said they play three times this week. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, it's a busy week. Tomorrow we host Camden. Thursday we go to Vidalia. Friday we got that rematch with Appling County over in Baxley. So busy week. And then the next week is the final week before the region play begins. Okay. I think so. there's two games next week. And then – then the following week is region play, Burke County on a Tuesday, and over at Burke, and then Friday a doubleheader here at, on the, I think it's March 17th is the date. So Okay. So it's, you know, it's region schedule about to kick in. That's what it's all about. you got to get that seating into the state playoffs. So. But I think we'll be fine come region play. I mean, yeah. Looking at the other region teams, you know, a lot of the region teams are struggling. So I think we'll be fine come region play. BC will be the big BC test. BC will be the big one. Yeah, they'll be the big test, but I think we can play with them. So that'll be a fun series. That's that's late in the in the season. It's late March. Okay. Well, that golf team. We talked about how talented a golf team. Finley Burke to shoot a sixty six down there at Osprey Cove. That's pretty impressive. And three of the four scores were under par. I mean, that's that's strong in that's high school golf. Yeah, it is. And they won by what? What did you say? Twelve strokes. 11, I think it was eleven or twelve. Eleven or strokes. twelve strokes. They won by in that tournament yeah, this weekend. I mean, they just, it's a very, very talented golf team. Yeah. Well, we saw that you know two years ago when they came in here when they were like you know sophomores, freshmen, sophomores, and stuff like that. Now they're getting up there to where some are seniors, some are juniors. They really work at their craft too. I mean, go out to the country club and you'll see those golfers on that putting green or out there playing golf. I mean, they they work at their craft. So it's a very talented group. So. Mm. Hopefully they can win a state championship. Like I said, they finished second last year, but they're they got their eyes set on that championship this year. Okay. Wouldn't bet against them. <laughs> Wouldn't bet against them. No, no, no. <laughs> Satan, you got the same folks back. <clears throat> finished second last year, so we'll see what happens this year. But they're fun to watch. But they're just starting for this year's um, um, <clears throat> season play, and uh, play also come. The state tournament will come a little later on. It's amazing how far those young guys hit that ball off that tee box. It's just it's amazing. Fun to watch. Good good group of kids, too. Like mm-hmm. I said, wish them the best. Yeah. I hope they can win that state championship. Be nice. Yeah. It would be very, very nice. And you say the uh, the county commission's got some meetings going on? we got two meetings today, one at 9 one at 12. So I have a report on those for you tomorrow on the local news. Okay. So county commission meeting today at 9 and at 12. And at 12. Both special call meetings, is that correct? Okay. Is that going to be at the county commissioner's office there on Walnut Street? Yeah. Okay. County commissioner's meeting room, yeah. Okay. That sounds good. All right. What else is going on, Bob? Anything at all? Not much. Not that. much? Long, long trip. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long trip. I mean, that wasn't Atlanta. That was way above Atlanta. <clears throat> I had a good time, though. Like I said, I got to see an old friend. Stayed Friday night with Matt Moody. And his family, so, you know, former Wayne County coach and now the principal up there at North Cobb High School, so it's good to see him. So, Okay. It's good. It was a good trip. Had a good time. I said get three good games, good competition. A lot of Wayne County fans made it up there. But, you know, looking forward to this week. Okay. Well, Bob, if you need nothing else, we'll wrap it up. Okay. All right. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM in Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Butter Supply, and by O'Quinn Associates.